Muniripu, 2014 drama thriller. Uh, you know, it really um knocks you over the head with some things. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> not trying to leave anyone on here. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but hey, man, what do you think about Mamuti in this movie? We always start with Mamuti first. So, what were your thoughts about main the main man? man? I mean, it's I I can't say anything about him than other other than I'm blown away every time I see a new movie of his. And it, I feel like I should just like a broken record at this point. But this is just another brilliant, understated performance from Mamuti. I was absolutely mesmerized by this character of Raghavan from the first scene we see him to the very last one. And this is, again, Mamuti playing almost like your ordinary man, but a bit different. <laughs> but it's the fact that he's got no flourishes there's nothing flashy about his character. He's not involved in any action sequences or anything. He doesn't really have any great monologues or anything. He doesn't talk a whole lot, but yep. he's so captivating in his personality. Such an enigmatic character because he doesn't say a lot. It's all just conveyed through gentle smiles, looking off into the distance, him just listening to what other people are saying and occasional bits of dialogue that seem to give an insight into his character, but it's completely enigmatic. You don't feel like you know this guy until probably the very end when there's, you know, some stuff goes down. But he is just absolutely mesmerizing this movie, man. And I think the way he's able to balance both sides of his character here, the gentle, serene side, the philosophical guy oh. who the journalist Anjali is drawn to with this character that he's accused of being a murderer of two women, his wife and, uh, I don't know, the uh, employee's daughter yes. or something. something like um, that. Yeah, like it's so hard to reconcile that gentle face with a man accused of doing those things. Yeah. And he is able to keep the enigma of that going the entire movie. And I just think it's beautifully done, man. Absolutely another masterclass performance. No, exactly right, man. It's so well done. Um, he is so so captivating in this movie, um, so alluring in everything he does. And it's because you're you're saying there's so much mystery around this movie the whole time. Yes. And he does a great job of yes. playing into that, right? Um, uh, totally. He definitely doesn't have a huge monologue, but every single – it's like he's got such a limited script, but everything he says yes. is so powerful. Every interaction he has is so powerful. 100%. Um, it's weird because I wouldn't even I don't know if he's even he would be the lead in this movie. I think the the actress who plays the journalist has definitely got more screen time. Um a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's carrying this movie and she's also phenomenal to be honest. I thought she was she's fantastic. Great. But yeah, just bit Mamuti, like he really makes the most of the limited time he's got. hundred percent. So And you kind of lean in as he's talking to see yeah. what is he saying? Is this something that un explains the mm -hmm. greater mystery here? Does it give a deeper yep. insight and so you find yourself hanging on to every word he's saying because he doesn't say very much so yep. it, the delivery there again is just masterful yeah no he, he's fantastic in this movie man and um this will be a sort of we don't normally do this but in this movie we're going to have a bit of reception it's kind of going to be a non-spoiler review for the first half or first three quarters maybe um we'll see how we go but then if you haven't seen this movie yet just yeah listen to us for the first bit but then Watch this before the end, because, yeah, we do want to talk about the end, closer towards the end of this <laughs> show. Um, but, yeah, man, just speaking of Mamuti, I just really enjoyed also the chemistry between himself and this actress I thought was fantastic. Um, yeah. Anjali, uh, the character's name Anjali, played by Aparna Gopinath. I don't know how much she's acted in or what she's done. No. Um, but, yeah. We haven't was, seen her before, I think. Yeah. No. I don't think so. No, no. And this is 2014, so I'm not sure, you know, this is definitely the oldest movie. That we've done. This is also the, also the youngest we've seen yes. Mamuti in a movie. Um, but <laughs> dude's you know, timeless, it's, man. Yeah, he he definitely is timeless. He um, I don't know, man. Also, I think we've talked about it before, but his presence, just physical presence, oh, is just that's right. there, right? Like he's just um, you know, handsome looking dude, tall dude. Um, yeah, and there's just something, and, and he carries it off so well, like. <laughs> A hundred percent. And it's the presence is different from, say, Bhishma Parvam, right? Where yes. he's like a mob boss and everyone helps create the presence by being so reverent to him and like mm -hmm. going into hushed tones when he's in the room. Here he plays a really reserved guy and people aren't necessarily really nice to him. In mm -hmm. fact, Anjali, the journalist, is quite rude to him at times. And so 
it's a lot of times that's right and yet he's still able to have that presence when no one really is respecting him he still brings that enigma and charisma to the performance and yeah that just is completely alluring every time he's on screen he's magnetic even if he's not the main guy he's not the one doing the dialogue or having the explosive emotions yeah so again, it's just reaffirming the stuff we've talked about in sort of some of our other reviews yeah. and our reaction videos. Um, he definitely fits into, he can get into a character, right? Like, the yeah. movie that we saw here, it's, you mentioned Beach and Paramount, but any other role, there might be some shades of some other characters. Like, in yes. Ampakul, he had a few shades of this, but it's a completely different yes. character and different role. It's a different um, character. Yeah. So he, yeah. And, and you don't you, see Mamiti. And you don't remember it's him. Yeah, you don't see Mamiti. That's yeah. exactly it. I you think don't... he disappears within the character. And he's able to do that without, you know, any makeup or anything, right? Because he no. just looks like an ordinary person and he's yeah. just walked onto set and he's transformed into this character. It doesn't require yeah. any changes to his, what he's wearing, no. what his kind of makeup or anything is. He just is able his... to inhabit this personality with nothing no um, makeup. to work with. No makeup, no CGI, no um, like no. prosthetics or anything like that. No big no. action scenes or like you know, no nice kind of uh, you know over the top kind of scenes. It's all under no distinctive like attire yeah. or anything. He's yes. just an ordinary guy. Yeah, just an ordinary guy, but so distinct <laughs> at the same yes. time. Yes, he plays on this so well. Yeah, man, he is. Yeah, just every time we see him, it's going to be. I think this is going to be the thing. Every time we keep seeing him, we're going to be more yes. and more amazed yes. by him. Um, but I'm glad we got to see, you know, a different version of him because uh, yes. this was definitely, yeah. And that's why I won't tire of seeing him, man, because I think he's just, he plays such vastly different characters. And so it's not like, oh, here we go, another Mamuti film. It's, oh, here's Mamuti and he's playing someone completely different. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I feel like you're not going to tire of seeing him on the screen. And, you know, I don't know how many acting credits he's got, but I'm I'm never going to get tired of it. <laughs> No, definitely not. It's truly unique, man. Like, I, 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 I can't really name many actors in the same field as him that can sort of have that same appeal. Um, that yes. every time you sort of see him, you never get sick of him. Like, even like in, in Hollywood, all actors, you sort of see the actor first. Um, yes, yes. You know, it's this is completely different from what Mamuchi does. It's you, you, I, I wonder what the, what Mamuchi actually is like because <laughs> you never get to see yeah, him yeah. On, on camera. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, yeah. What is the real Mamuchi? <laughs> Who is the real Mamuchi? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> With a real mummy, mummy tea, please stand up. <laughs> but um, yeah, man. It's crazy, right? Um, let's talk about this movie. This movie was pretty pretty different, I've got to say. I've got to say this movie's tone and pace and everything is pretty different from anything we have seen so far because I think it totally. stays to one tone for almost 95% of the movie, it feels like. Yeah. You go on a yeah. completely different journey in this movie to where you end up. Um, yes. that's a shell shock yes. you at the end but what do you think sort of think about this movie how it sort of plays out the in and outs of the movie um, the whole journey with the, the journalist trying to make her career go up at the yes. same time you know launch my music yeah. career or something like that uh, is, we're going to talk about sort of the themes about freedom which is a central concept about this whole movie yeah. but um, yes. in terms of the movie do you enjoy the, the journey that these two characters were sort of going on Hundred percent, man. I was mesmerized from this, from this, off this film, from the first scene through to the last. And you think of that first scene; it's like so long. The ants carrying the gecko across yeah. the screen, and that like lasts for ages. But it's just weirdly mesmerizing, man. It, yeah, like a really long time. And it's like the ants aren't co- going in a straight line; they're kind of going in a weird zigzag, yes. and you're wondering what's going on. And maybe it's like, I don't know, emblematic of the film where nothing is kind of as it seems or nothing goes in a straight line, I guess. Yeah. Kind of goes all over the place. But I think there are two almost competing plots here. There's one about Raghavan or the Mamuti character and what is his deal? Is he a killer of these two women that he's been accused of and is spending time in jail? And then you have the story of Anjali, the journalist, who, as you're saying, is trying to make a name for herself, trying to you know, get away from just being a ghostwriter and become, you know, a nationally renowned yep. journalist. And Mamuti and Raghavan is her ticket to stardom, I guess, and fame. And I found both of those stories in different ways weirdly compelling because obviously the Mamuti story, a great mystery, right? Who is this guy? What is his deal? Um, what, is he go- what is he thinking? These philosophies he's got about freedom and what it means to be truly free in the world you want to learn more about that. And he gives away enough snippets of his 
personality that you know that there's something deeper going on beneath the serene smiles and everything because you get these random outbursts from him like when he's having a yeah. drink with those yes. people and you and you get like oh he says something there about bloodshed and how sometimes that is needed for evolution and one must do whatever it takes to obtain freedom for yeah. themselves and you're like oh well that's a random thing but then you look at him and he's such an innocent yeah. guy and you can't kind of mesh those two personalities together right so yes. that tension is there you're trying to you're trying to solve that mystery of who is Mamuti, who is Raghavan? Did he do the crimes that he's mm -hmm. um, committed? Because the first thing he tells the journalist is, I didn't do it, which is a pretty yep. full on thing to say to a person you've just met. Like, you must have yep. a lot of conviction. So that's an interesting story. And then, as you're saying, that Anjali plot about her, you know, grinding to be this journalist and then, you know, getting success because of the Raghavan story and then finding herself in this new stressful environment of having to meet the deadlines of these publishers yeah. and the stress that she goes under. That's a like not a you know really exciting plot, but I was equally captivated yeah. by that because you feel the stress that she's going through as she rocks up every day to visit Raghavan and he hasn't written one yeah. word yet. She has to start avoiding the calls of her publishers, start lying to her boss, and you feel the tension rising up because you're like, lady, just sort this out, please. Be <laughs> honest. Stop. Don't you're getting yourself into bigger problems, but you totally understand because there's a golden opportunity to get fame. So that story is also really just compelling, man. And then those two stories come together at the very end in a <laughs> spectacular way, right? Um, I think th the one part of this plot that I think there are parts, and you might know what part I'm talking about, where it maybe goes a little bit slowly. It's mm -hmm. those long sequences where Raghavan is in the room in the apartment. He's yeah. trying to figure out what to write and it, it kind of happened. It goes on for a long period, that inability to write or his writer's block or whatever is the reason yep. to not write his autobiography. And that stretches out a bit. But I forgive that because that probably makes what happens at the end all mm. the more just of a gut punch, I think. So, yeah, absolutely yeah. compelled by the plot, man. Yeah, no, no, I think I definitely agree with you, man. It was really compelling because I think the whole story with the journalist is actually probably one that's probably the most relatable for us in yes. the story. Like, it's something that of we've course, all, of course. you know, sort of been through, yeah. right? We've all been through totally. you know, deadlines. We have to do something. We see better opportunities. That's right. We think about yes. that. Then we're balancing the opportunity with the possibility. Um, you know, uh, what parts should we take? This is one road. This is another road. Which one's going to lead us to the better success? That's right. So it's so... And you know yeah. that 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 feeling of like, oh, I'm going to miss this deadline, but I, I don't want to tell yes. anyone that, or like I'm stressing mm -hmm. out a lot, and it bleeds into all the other parts of your life, right? Yeah. Anjali cracks it at her mother because yeah. something she says, the stress shows on her face in her interactions with her journalist colleagues. So yeah, that you're right, it is yeah. absolutely relatable. Yeah, so I really enjoyed like following her journey, and I'm, I'm pretty glad that sort of let Mamuchi just sort of be this, you know, um, mysterious character on the side. You know, and yes, sort of, and yes. sort of be the backbone um, of this movie because yeah, she was um, is really enjoy. I enjoyed watching that sort of journey and what she's going to do because, like you, I was like basically like, what's going to happen here? Like, what decision is she going to make? What is going to happen with this story? For Christ's sake, like you know, yes, like, yes. She's depending, she puts she's putting all hopes on, um, you know, uh, Raghavan to sort of deliver here, but then it's also at the same time you're like, wait, he's a he's a prisoner. You don't know him that well yet. Like, yeah, yeah. So that's Why would hanging, you put your faith in this guy? Yeah. yeah. So that's still hanging over your head. Like, we don't know enough about this character to understand what his intentions are. Um, yes. It seems like he's very philosophical, as they sort of allude to throughout the entire yes. movie. Um, and some of the stuff he says in this movie is like, whoa. Like, there's some yeah. lines in this that he says that I was like, taking it back by. Like, he was, there was one part that he says about the, um, like, the, on the, um, the statues of the Indian. There's like three, three lions, three lions. towards you, yeah. and there's one in the back that you can't see. Um, so there's just all these yes, sort of you know philosophical truth. lines that make you think a, a, a little bit here gems. and there. Yeah, yes. gems basically, and he does that. He does that throughout the entire movie. So there's enough to just keep you like you know captivated, despite you know no big, no big, um, no big extravagant scenes. You know, there's nothing no, really exactly. major happening. Um, there's a lot of tension throughout this movie. I feel like uh, oh, each so of the characters, much. right? Like you sort of mentioned it before with Anjali's whole situation. Um, you don't really know what's going to happen. And then you have the internal conflict that's happening with, you know, obviously Raghavan. Like something is brewing yes. there that we're yes. not able to sort of pick apart. Yes. It never, that mystery stays with us in, throughout the entire 
movie basically until the last yeah it doesn't relent um, yeah we don't know who he is is he a criminal or not because i don't know about you man but i thought he the way they've done this movie and a lot of credit has to go to direction writing the people that did the totally, production yeah. and the score like they really yes. make it seem like um mamuti is innocent right that's the time yes like they yes. really paint that sort of picture for us like he's you know not done anything wrong just with sort of the music they're playing when they're showing him and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, like ge- very gentle violins and stuff. I Correct. really observed that. And like that, it, it just creates this very calm atmosphere every time he's on screen. And that's why you can never quite compute this guy's meant to be accused of killing two women. That doesn't, Exactly. He, it never sits like perfectly with you. Yeah. And he always keeps throwing out this mysterious stuff like, you know, about, and we'll talk about, this is going to be in the freedom section, definitely about, you know, yes. he's at peace and prison and he stayed longer than he's had to. So yes. is it like he's just gone in and he's decided to enjoy it? You can't yes. tie it together. <laughs> yes, you know? yes. Um, but yeah, I was I was just like you, man. I was fully captivated and enjoying the whole journey. Um, yes, of this entire movie. But yeah, man. And man, can I just can yeah. I just like jump in there as well about the actress who plays Anjali? Yeah, we discussed how terrific she is, and we've discussed Mamuti, but like she holds her own beside Mamuti in this film, oh, right? Yeah. In fact, she's like is yeah. the one having the bigger emotional outbursts and yelling at him and calling him lazy and things like that. Yeah. And she does such a really great job of being this really confident and capable journalist, but at the same time this very vulnerable person as well who's trying yeah. to balance kind of this newfound stardom and the pressures of this new job, not wanting to admit that she might miss this deadline, yeah. trying to keep up appearances. Like I just think she is also able to convey so much through just looks and without saying a whole lot. And I just thought she she did such a terrific job, man. I, I was blown yeah. away by the depth of her performance as well because I think she carried it because Mamuti's not on screen the whole time. It is no. her story, as you're saying, and Mamuti's Correct. almost the side character, very compelling, but it's really her whose journey you are following and you are there for that journey. She builds yeah. the world of a struggling journalist trying to make it in yeah. India, I guess, or make a name for herself on a national scale. And yeah, I, the, um, like the film does a great job of showing the world of a journalist, I think, which is yes. something I'm not familiar with. Yeah, true, true. The difficulties that they sort of have to sort of make it, um, you know, get that big break. But she is such a, I mean, her performance is fantastic, but she has such a good balance to everything, right? Because even throughout the yes. movie, there's times when I'm on her side and you see the kindness that she sort of has and, you know, how she's accepting she wants to understand more about Mamuti. She's being yes. investigative, so she's obviously very thorough in what she does. She's good at what yes. she does. Yes, But she also is sometimes even unfair to, um, to um, Raghavan Total. at times. Yeah. Right? So, you know, and you said the mother situation as well. Um, she's yes. obviously having other pressures on her life, like marriage and things like that. Yes. So she's, it's a pretty pretty detailed character. She's not just um, yeah. one pony. She's got a lot going on. No. And she has to put on a lot of hats. And I think she goes on an actual arc. Like Mamuti's yeah. character, he, his personality is just revealed. It's not like a yeah. journey that he goes on, right? Whereas her character, she goes from this kind of unknown ghostwriter to now national fame and yes. then the pressures of uh, the next thing that she's asked to deliver because of that fame. And then I think at the end she realizes like the boyfriend or the potential partner character, yep. he kind of tells her like, you know, is this worth all of the stresses and sometimes when I have stresses in my life, I just abandon those stresses yeah. and she eventually realizes, okay, maybe that's what I need to do as well. So you really kind of see that kind of understanding that it's not all about her career and maybe some things aren't worth the sacrifices mm. she's making. So she goes on that journey. Yeah. Yeah. The boyfriend character, little cameo from Pretty Raj. Uh, yeah. Delivers some, from- delivers some gens of his, as well. Yeah. And pretty, then pretty, he's out. Pretty. I, I don't know how he was involved with this movie because he, he's a superstar in his own right. So, so yes. when he came on screen, I was like, "What?" <laughs> you know, for myself, I was like, "Wait, <laughs> what is this guy yes. doing?" <laughs> and he was a very charismatic character as well. Yeah, and the time yeah. he was on the screen, I was kind of like, "Oh wow, this guy is yeah, definitely terrific performance and leaves an impact." Yeah, definitely. No, no, I think his role is quite small, but it definitely mm. it helps to sort of you know, you know, and again. This will be we might start getting spoilers here, so if you want to jump jump out, jump out. Um, yeah, but yeah, like basically the downfall that she's going through. It's at the time when sort of things are starting to go up, right? Like she yeah. is sort of the one thing that she's actually decided to be happy with, 
despite her yes. career kind of being in shambles because of this whole yes. mismanagement of this book job versus, you know, putting her faith in Raghavan. So there's something yes. going up for her, at least there. So that's what he sort of yes. provides all for yes. this crumble later on. Uh, but, um, brutal. Yeah, man, before we do get to that, though, I do want to talk about this movie in terms of, because this movie is about some pretty heavy, pretty deep themes, I found, man. It talks about yes. some pretty deep themes, I think, um, throughout this movie. I think the central concept and theme about this whole movie is, like, you know, freedom and what does that mean to sort of individual? Yes. What does that mean to people? You know, we see Raghavan's concept of freedom is completely different to what yours and eyes are or what the yes. journalist Anjali's is or anyone else in the world, world right? And it's hinted yes. at throughout the entire movie, but what it, how did you like that whole, how they sort of play with this theme of freedom and what it means to him? Because he is, in his mind, a very, completely free yes. and happy in prison. Yes. Um, yes. And that's genuine. It's nothing, there's, there's, it, it's not like it's, um, they show that really well. So you believe he is, <laughs> especially towards yes, the end. Yes. Yes. Um, but yeah, man, how did you yeah, like man, that? Yeah, it, man. It, it's such an interesting concept of freedom that, a man would feel most at free in a confined environment with yeah. no one else really but himself. Like his ultimate freedom is being able to be with himself and live the life that he wants and that you can find that anywhere. I find that such an interesting concept because maybe freedom doesn't mean being able to have everything you want. It's maybe realizing mm. what it is is important to you and going about and achieving it. And like he has a very distinct concept of what freedom means to him. And I think what is remarkable about him is the lengths he's willing to go to to achieve that freedom, right? Like you and I might struggle yeah. at work, but there's only so much we're going to do to rebel against work. We might <laughs> change jobs or something. We're not going to go as yeah. far as Mamuti does in this film or Raghav yeah. does in this film. So he's, I think I was really drawn to kind of his philosophical thinking of what freedom means. And the fact that someone can find freedom in the most unusual places. I, I love mm -hmm. that idea. I love hearing people's philosophies about that. Yeah. Um, and I guess what's really shocking here is the extent to which he's willing to go to realize his uh, yeah. own version of freedom. <laughs> no, definitely right, man. It's a, uh, I don't know, man. There's a lot to sort of think about with the whole concept because, yeah, freedom for him is like, as I said before, like it, it's, we find out basically, you know, he is not free on the outside. That's what the movie sort of, yes. I think, demonstrates. Right? Yes. Like, basically, from the moment he gets out of jail, it's a struggle for him. Yes. Like, he's kind of like, yes. it alludes to like, because he's on his own journey as well, right? Like, it's not, I know it's not as probably deep as what Anjali's character is. Like, there's yes. not as much turbulence. Yes. But, you know, yes. he's at a place where he's, for himself, he's peaceful. And he sort of gets, he kind of enjoys the fame for a bit, right? Like, he's drawn to that. Yes. Right? After he yes, sees his true. photo, I think he even says, like, I can't read it because he can't read English. Yeah. Um, yes. and he just sees his photos of him being popular and he starts to enjoy yes. that temporarily. But True. you sort of see that downfall later on, how he doesn't actually enjoy it that much and he struggles um, yes. outside of prison. Like he struggles a lot. He can't, even when he's outside, he just stays inside a room the whole time. Um, yeah. You know, it, it reminded me of like, weirdly, like Shawshank Redemption. You know, when people yeah. leave prison, they yes, struggle yes. to find meaning Definitely. in their life and it's a, it's a really like challenging thing to reaccustom yourself reaccustomize yeah. yourself to especially if you've been in prison for decades like my mood yeah no has. exactly right i thought it was going to have the slow realization yeah. for him that this freedom is not the freedom that he wants no no at, at some moment at some time i thought this movie was going to go down that line like is it going to be about how he's yes. going to manage oh. to get, get through life you know out yes. of prison and that's going to be a story about that like how he's made it back in the world yes. and stuff like that after he's been in prison for so long and he sees a new perspective yes. but no it completely flips it on his head at the end um yes but yeah it's uh i just thought it was completely fascinating and there was like there were some themes that i i don't know how much to really make out of this so i want to get your sort of opinion on it because i know yeah. there was some it was they alluded to communism a few times throughout this movie and you know care of the mm. communist state i think there's a boy with like a che Guevara shirt um Yes. And there's a few other yes. instances like that. So I don't know if they were trying to imply, and this is just a random theory of mine, if if it's meant to be like, you know, jail was meant to be communism for him because he's provided everything. He's provided food, he's provided shelter, he's provided everything from the government, right? Um, and yes. so the outside world is meant to be, you know, sort of more the liberal world, uh, you know, the more um, capitalist yes, world. Yes, yes. I don't know if that's what the capitalist, trying to yeah. do. Yeah, I don't know if that's what they're trying it's to do really, with that metaphor. It, yeah. Yeah. 
I, that's really interesting, man, because as you're saying that, like I hadn't thought of that. So it's a great mm. point. But as you're talking about the distinction between the inside world being communism and the outside world being maybe capitalist, yeah. I think in prison he is provided for, as you're saying, and in the outside world his freedom is subject to him producing stuff. Yep. An- Anjali, right? He has to produce an output yes, exactly being a right. book yeah. or something. And that is why he's getting these favors of, you know, food delivered to his door and all of yep, that. Yep. But again, he's in our own sort of prison in that environment. Yes. And it's <laughs> worse for him because he's asked to produce something in order to show his value to Anjali or he's being exploited for his story yep. so that someone else can benefit from uh, and get fame from his experiences, yeah. I guess. So really interesting idea, man. I hadn't thought of that. No, and they, they also even pointed that a little bit before as well, because there's another theme that I want to talk about a little bit, was um, there is some scenes where Anjali meets with somebody, I can't remember who, but I think he's he's a poet, he mentions, and he has yeah. a, a relationship with Raghavan, who sends him some material that he references, yes. and it's not for money, he just does it, he just sends it to him. Yes, you know? yes. Um, so again, a personal idea you just talked about, like he's not doing it for money, he's not doing it for anything, it's just his no. thoughts, and he's putting it out there. Yes, um, yes. And it's being taken so he can do it freely and easily and not have to worry about any of no, the pressures right. of the world. Um, that's right. But basically, you know, when he's put in a situation where he has to produce under a deadline. Uh, that's right. The movie does a great job in showing us, you know, the corporatization of uh, journalism and stuff like that. Art versus, you know, um, True, what man. you need to do. Because she has to do things under this 30-day timeline or whatever it is. That really short timeline, she has to do something. Um that's, so, that's yeah. right. I found that idea really interesting, man, because imagine how scared she gets when she realizes some other journalist is approaching yes. Raghavan. Yeah. Like she freaks out, right? Because she's like, yeah. oh, no, someone's going to steal my story. And then the publishers are like, "Where well, someone's going to do a story on Raghavan in the next month. Yeah. This book needs to be done before then. So that understanding the media and journalism right. landscape, like, yeah, it is a, a very capitalist yeah. mentality, right? You need to get output done, it needs to be done by a certain yeah. time. and kind of uh, grinding people to the bone to get stuff done. Yes, I I had thought about that like a little bit and you sort of expanded upon my thought, which is what I was looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great point, So it definitely does sort of, there is some sort of connotations or um, overtones of sort of communism versus, um, you know, capitalism and basically how that all plays out in this microcosm of this movie and the two worlds. Um, One other thing that I did want to talk about, like, yeah, so I did... I did read somewhere where this, and this isn't my reference, but from what I read somewhere was that this movie has some similarities to the book, maybe the greatest book ever written, um, Crime and Punishment from, by Dostoevsky. Oh, snap. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It does have some, and that, again, that communism whole thing plays again. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Grew yeah. up in yes. communist Soviet Union. So that would make a lot of sense to sort of reference Yeah, 100%. That book. Yeah. Um, yeah, because there is some sort of nihilistic, um, Themes going on, some yes. of the tones of sort of existentialism, like what's the meaning of life and what's the purpose of life? Uh, yes. Is it all just meaningless? Yes. And he's what is and, freedom? Yes, yeah. yeah Raghavan alludes to that, right? Like he says stuff like about you know, um, this is just a bit of turbulence in the middle of life. Like it doesn't mean much. Like prison exactly. doesn't mean anything different to anything else. No, so right. yeah, yeah. It's a pretty. This movie is pretty deep if you really sort of look into those, yes. those sort of themes, which I think I myself have not comprehended everything. What this movie no, I haven't either. is about. Um, yes. But there's definitely, it's a movie that I can definitely understand why it got so much uh, sort of appeal. And it's, you know, yes. apparently it was both a critical success and a um, commercial success as well. So it obviously oh, wow. did. It was surprised, yeah, man. Well. I'm surprised to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I think this film demands stuff of you, I think. It's not just definitely. you go in and watch it and, you know, you watch, no. you pay your price of admission and leave again. I think. It makes you think, it makes you go on the journey and you spend your time with these characters and time where not a lot is happening as well. So you've got to invest. Yeah, no, definitely. A lot of the time you're in this movie and you're wondering like, what's actually going to happen in this movie? And it gets so That's much, it. which is a good segue into what happens here yeah. at the end here, man, because the end of this yeah. movie, oh my God, I, I'm not yes. going to lie, man. I did not see that coming. There's no didn't way in the world that I could have guessed that at all. Um, but yeah, man, what, before I said, what, what, oh, what, what did you think about how you know, to be wrapped up? You know up? what, man? <laughs> I mean, look, I, I, there was a situation where I thought something like this could go down, yeah. but I, it was such a 
distant possibility in my mind. This was not in the top five conclusions that I would have thought for this <laughs> film. But I, but the film was always creating an enigma around um, the Raghavan character, right? Yeah. You always knew there was something more to his character than just the smiles and all of that. So I wasn't in like uh, completely taken aback by it. But the way in which it happens, man, it's <laughs> like she goes into this distant, like, foresty area where she's now set him up to do the writing. Yeah. And the way he finally hands her the papers, she's reading them and he's oh, just casually just packing up his gear, almost preparing to go to prison again, right? It just like so methodically done without a change in expression. And as she's reading it, you see the fear creep all of like go down, <laughs> like almost a visceral reaction, hands shaking, lips quivering. Yeah. And then she looks up and he's standing there with a look that will be ingrained in my memory for so yeah. long, man. <laughs> it is a freaky smile, so out of character, yeah. completely terrifying. And then he hits her over yeah. the head. And that's the end. Yeah, man, I'd, that blew my mind the way that that went down. And part of me is like, it's not an unsurprising ending. And maybe if we went back and watched the film, we could see yeah. kind of the progression towards that because I'm sure I missed stuff. But you get inklings of his character, right? Yep, yep. Whether it's that scene in the bar with those random guys where yep. he's talking about sometimes you need to have bloodshed and in uh, sometimes it's called domestic violence, sometimes it's called a revolution, but both require bloodshed. Yep. You're like, oh, that's, a, that's an interesting philosophy. Uh -huh. so, like it's possible that he is this character, but Mamuti's performance to keep both of those possibilities of innocence <laughs> and guilt yeah. up until the very last two minutes of this film what a performance and what an ending, man. <laughs> no, it was so incredible, man. I was, like, thrown aback by that ending, man. Like, you're right. I mean, I definitely didn't see it coming, but the way that this, everything was executed, as you said, like, my music uh. obviously star of the show, but, again, um, Aparna, um, the actress here, she was fantastic and just terrific, shivering and terrific. shaking. And she's realized it's almost like a deer in headlights, right? Like, she knows this is, yes. she can't run, she can't do anything. She's so There's shocked. Nothing yet. By she's put all this faith, all this belief into this character who she almost dismissed the fact that he murdered these women. Like he's like, he yeah, yeah. have done it. Like he's, she's, no. you know, she's very cordial with him. She's visited him multiple times. You wouldn't visit a murderer multiple times, especially no. a woman who has, a, he's murdered two women. So why would she visit him? Because she's built that faith. That's right. And she built that faith and she's yeah. yelled at him other times, like very yes. disrespectfully, right? And he's never responded. He's no. kind of just smiles and like accepts that maybe he's at fault and he needs yeah. to do better and start writing. And so, like, I understand her perspective that you know this guy uh -huh. isn't someone who will fight back. Like, he's meek and she's yeah, the exactly. dominant he's, person um, in this relationship. Yeah, exactly. She's very confrontational. She sort of stabs yeah. her authority multiple times. She sits in the room with him and makes him write. What yes, has to write basically. She does everything in her power to sort of show how powerful she is over him. So to see that yes. happen to her at that point. It's completely shocking, but man, that face he makes at the end. I think oh it's, my God. It's, it's not just, it's, it's the context. I think that's also so important in this because we spent the whole movie with him just being, you know, almost, almost sometimes almost like a saint, like at the start of the movie, they're like praising him. Like he's yeah, some yeah, yeah. highest spiritual, it's a good point. um, what's you call it? Uh, guru, guru. intellectual, like very philosophical, philosophical guy. Yeah. Intellectual is the right word. Yeah. He's very intellectual. He's very smart. He knows what he's doing. He's like sort of a, Savant, you know, someone that didn't have an yes. education, but is a genius yes. Um, yes. with his thoughts. So it's it just completely shocks you to see him have that face at that time. And it is yes. one that, oh my God, it's... That etched in I, my mind, man. Yeah, it same. is such a weird <laughs> contortion of his face and you're like, oh my God, like, that is it's, the last face I'd see. But like, yeah. Yeah, man. man. It is. It's like, it's like psychotic, you know, those... Yes, like, that's the word. Yeah. Like I had um sort of uh like there's tones of this of Rorschach. Like he's kind of yeah. crazy in that movie. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah, 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 yeah. In that one he's more like fueled by rage. In this movie he's more yes. like he's he's just psychotic. Like he's actually someone that's unstable. You know? Well uh, uh, and see that's <laughs> the thing, because he does it so methodically, right? So he, it's almost like he doesn't feel the consequences of what he's doing. He's just a guy who's like, oh, this is my way to yeah. get my freedom back, which is to get rid of this woman who's harassing me constantly to write a book and to go back to prison, which is yeah. where I'm most at home. And so just the fact that he's does it without a, you know, 
second thought by the looks of it. He's just methodically mm-hmm. folding his clothes and doing all of that while she's reading and freaking out. Like it's, yep, it's, yep. Uh, it is psychotic. Yeah. And I, th- I think she, she's asking him questions and he's not answering. Like he just keeps yes. smirking and keeps sort of smiling. Yes. Like he knows what's coming. Like he's almost yes. enjoying the fact he's going to just, you know, lay this, you know, generous out. Yes. Who you would think that he's developed some kind of connection to as well. Cause that's what the movie set us up for. Like True. they set us yeah, up yeah, like yeah. these two other central characters and they get to know each other. There's sort of yes, having some fights here and there. Yeah. yeah. But there is some respect between them. Some that's understanding right. between them. And then just, yeah. Hits you right over there. <laughs> and, and I did it literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think one of the things, aside from being a great, like, you know, shocking moment and as a plot yeah. device, I think it's also such a, like, meaningful end in that it's a, yeah. it's very tragic for, um, the Anjali's character because she's finally just set her life up straight, right? Right. She's got this, like, man that she's found who's very supportive. She's finally realized that, okay, I'm not going to bother with this Raghavan guy anymore. Stuff the publishing deal. I'm going to let it go. I'm not going to stress out about this. And she's come out the other end. Things are looking great. And just at that moment, it's all taken away from her. (laughs) Just as she's found her freedom, maybe, from him and the stresses of work, it comes into conflict with his sense of freedom, which is to eliminate her and to go back to prison. Yeah, it's such a tragic end, man. Um, Yeah, brutal. Yeah, it's such a tragic end. And you're right. It's so, like, I think we, I think... Early on when we used to review a lot of movies, we used to talk about how sort of movies wouldn't have the best endings, you know? I yes. Think we sort of talked about how point. in um, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, like uh, in a Besh, the Besh third Bakar, act, um, the third act yeah. would always sort of fall apart somewhere. Like we wouldn't be yes. so much of that how the movie ends. Just you, As of yes, late, yes. Like, these movies that we're reviewing are tying things yeah. together so beautifully. Like um yes. the things like there's did subtle little things here and there. Like one other thing when we talked about the whole freedom concept, right? So when yeah. he's when he's staying at the other place, you know, before the other Priya journalist comes and visits him, he's in some kind of like, you know, around people. So he's with the, yeah. you know, he's around other people. There's an other boy coming who he becomes friends with. Um, yeah. Yeah. But then at the end, he goes towards isolation again. Right. Yes. So he's not in jail, yes. but he's gone to that, yes. you know, that beautiful, uh, you know, countryside or wherever in and the woods. By yeah. himself again. Right. So he's almost yes. at peace. He's almost at his, in his own element. Yes. Once again. Yes. Cause it just ties it all together so well. Um, and you're yes. exactly right. There are so many hints throughout this movie. All the stuff that he said that were, you know, philosophical gems, they can yeah. all be interpreted the other way around. Like yeah. It's all, yes. Um, yes. Like one part early on he mentions about, because there are those, like, you know, obviously very visceral and um, obvious scenes about, like, when he's getting, um, when he's had a few drinks with the guys. Yeah. Like, he's saying all this like, outlandish stuff. But there's one at the start, yeah. he says, when he meets... Anjali and she has a recording device and she sort of puts it in front of him and he says, What is this device? And he says, She yes. says, Oh, it's a device just for recording voices. And he says something like, Oh, it doesn't record thoughts, does it? Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, now That's you're like, right. Oh wow, yes. if you knew what <laughs> you, you knew. knew what he was thinking, <laughs> then the, yeah, she would not be investigating. You would this. not yeah. That's right. Yeah, wouldn't go down this journey with him. Oh, exactly. So true, man. So there's a lot of hints throughout the movie, but you don't see them at all until no, revelation. it all comes but, together perfectly. Yeah, so it's, oh, I don't know, man. It's a pretty perfect end. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It, it is just, a perfect end. Yeah. And it, this film, I think, does a terrific job of, like, subverting expectations, I think. <laughs> yeah. Like, I just, I mean, and they're very basic points, right? But, like, I think we are so, like, drawn to people who are very intellectual and, like, yes. philosophical, right? That's who we gravitate towards. So we yep. immediately think, all right, I want to follow this Raghavan guy and get to know mm-hmm. more about him. But the reason she goes to prison in the first place is to talk to this retiring superintendent guy yes. who is, you know, has done some good rehabilitation program and he might have actually done some really good stuff mm-hmm. to improve prisoners' life once they get out of prison and reintegrate back into society. But he's not this charismatic, intellectual-sounding no. guy. So we're almost just like chewing him off the screen, like, get out of here, guy. Let's focus <laughs> on Raghavan. And it's, it, I think it's interesting about the kind of people we're drawn to sometimes it's not yep. the people who are very clearly good it's maybe the people who you know maybe have shades of gray within them and i think yep. another thing that i always find is when we have films about people who are incarcerated and they tell you at the start that they're innocent mm. we're automatically trained to think that must be the case <laughs> right we think that our yep. oh, police must have been negligent uh police must have had it in for this guy 
But here, it was a clear-cut case. Like, even his lawyer is like, yeah, it's pretty obvious he did it. And then, like, I think Anjali <laughs> speaks to the mother and she's like, yeah, he was here when she died. And you're, yeah. you kind of just forget that because you're trained to think there must be something deeper going on. But you know, there's not. He straight up committed those murders yeah. at the start and he's committed a third one without, Correct. like, trying to cover it up or anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I just found all of those, like, a very interesting reflection of, what we expect from films yep. and the kind of things we're drawn to and the people we're drawn to. Yeah, it's not just films, it's character. That's Anjali's journey. Anjali doesn't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anjali is told to her face that, like, look, he did it. Like, he did it multiple times. Yes. But she doesn't <laughs> yeah. believe any of it because of, you know, the stuff you mentioned before. His yeah, yeah, yeah. and his charisma and his intellect yes. were sort of drawn towards that, that mystery behind him. Um, the disbelief right. that this man can actually kill. Uh, yes. Two like, people. we take so much cues in ordinary life from people's yeah. face right first impressions yes are hard to dislodge right and your first impression of, of raghavan is he's a gentle nice intelligent guy yes and it takes until the very last moment of this <laughs> film to figure out no behind this face is a monster yeah no it's um pretty crazy the other question is sort of just posed on like right towards the end there after all this because it's sort of also just, you know, something you think about after the movie's happened. You think like... Yes. Because everyone is, as we said, drawn to this character. We even have the guys at the pub that get him to come and have drinks, right? They see yes. him on the magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, whoa, you must be, you know, um, the guy in the magazine. We've read your stuff. You're also the other poet who references his material all the time. Like, how it puts you in this comfortable, comfortable position that genius can sometimes be oh. the beholder of someone that's completely terrible, right? That's, so, That's right. It plays with that question of your head, like, is this right or wrong? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Because the quality of their output, like the quality of their thought is so amazing, right? And you see it in the modern world with great artists like Roman Polanski or whatever, great yes. directors, yeah. very shady background, <laughs> but we still go and watch his films or people still yeah. go and watch his films and are willing to put away these other apprehensions they might have about him. And yes. here in this, like maybe Anjali's like, willingly ignorant of what the evidence is suggesting because he's a fascinating guy. He's incredibly intelli- intelligent and he's her ticket to, you know, stardom, I guess. So uh, great point. Definitely. It's a bit of commentary on that, right? They want to make a book on him. Um, yes. autobi- like an autobiographical book and everything like that. So he's just, despite his personality, which you find out at the end. Yes. It's definitely plays on some, that's a very, you know, as in today's age, that's a very recent thing with all the stuff that's come out about celebrities and directors, as you said, Roman Prolosky. True. Great one, because he had some real gems. Um, <laughs> and then yeah. Yeah, we find out about him later on. Um, yes. So, yeah, man, a lot to think about. And just the, even the very, very end, how it just shows he's in the prison. And it's yes. Such a, it's such an uncomfortable feeling because he's at peace as where he is. Yes. But he's murdered. There's no remorse. People now. And you just see the picture right. of her on top and you're like, oh, oh my God. This is... and, and like think about the, <laughs> the somewhat psychotic nature that he has their pictures in, yeah. his, in his cell, like to look at that every day of your life. But like what, yeah. is, what are you thinking about? What, he's so committed to his philosophy of removing obstacles so he can be completely free Correct. that these are just obstacles. They're not people to him anymore, maybe. No. Yeah, that, that's haunting because like all the times they – they kept showing it in between, right? He kept looking at the two photos side by side. Good and point. Yes. I, yes. I think that time I would have thought he's reflecting on sort of what he's done wrong or he's missing his wife. This man doesn't misunderstand that's happened. But yes. no, he's looking at it as like salvation. It's given him Yes. Peace. Oh my that's God, right. it's so twisted. <laughs> that is, that is like the more you think about it, the more insane it is or the levels of like, yeah, unfeeling, lack of empathy, psychoticness yeah. is, is, is mind bending. Oof. Man, this movie was pretty incredible, man, I've got to say. Um, amazing. I think we've pop- talked about it, man. We can probably move on. But before I do, I've got to give a big special mention uh, to my main man, the Norway Machan. Thank you, mate. You recommended this movie. I wouldn't say you recommended You forced me to do this movie. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> no, 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 definitely not. Um, thank you so much for recommending it because it's definitely one that, you know, it's given us a different perspective of sort of Mamuti. And also, to be honest, yes. one thing I like about not just this movie, but a lot of sort of Malayalam movies is, you know, I think people don't understand Indian movies like to be like this, you know, this is an extremely yes. deep movie. Same way that Nanpakal was, right? Completely deep, completely 100%. philosophical. Um, yep. No, you know, big songs or dancing or wedding or 
you know, um, no. no gods coming at it from everywhere. No, this is this is like no. art. This is what comes out of this this industry. It's not the other stuff you see on you know mainstream hundred percent man stuff like that. This is I'm going stuff. on that journey because I was the <laughs> yeah. one who thought that it's all about song and dances yeah. Yeah. and big action sequences, right? So I'm I'm Correct. learning as we go, and it's it's amazing to discover this new industry that is yeah. kind of producing such vastly different kind of films yeah. and it's such high quality. Definitely, it's movie like intellectual. It's it's, it's it's definitely experimental. It's bold. It's brilliant. yes. Um, but yeah, it's just a great product in the end of the day, man. So thank it's you. It's a great time. story, first it. and foremost. Yeah. Yes, exactly right. Um, but yeah, let's get on to our final ratings, man. I think this has been a really good review, really good talking about this movie with you, and I'm really glad we did a old movie. But if you guys, yeah. like, if, if if you guys want us to do more older movies, you know, ones that aren't so recent, leave a comment. Obviously, I know you leave some good recommendations. Um, there's some recommendations that are similar to this movie, actually. Uh, yeah. Because there's obviously we've done a lot of Mamuti movies, but if there's anything else yeah. that you know which is a bit similar, we'd love to sort of have a comparison or something like that. Um, 100%. But yes, Sunny Man, give me the hand it to you. Where does this fall on your disco? What's your final rating? This is a high dynamite in my view, man. Yeah. I just was, you know, first and foremost, intrigued from start to end, man. You can't expect much more from a film, right? Yeah. It just captivates you from the start to end and you leave wanting to know more about these characters. I, I would love to explore the philosophies and the kind of motivations of Raghavan even more. Um, and, yeah, look, I said there were some pacing issues, but I could forgive that because the ending just absolutely yeah. hits you over the head, as you said, and makes that wait all the more kind of meaningful, I think. My man, Mamuti, came through with another amazing <laughs> performance, gripping complex, nuanced, scary, like completely riveting. And Arpana Gobinath absolutely held her own beside Mamuti. Mesmerized, would love to see more of her. So, look, this is another classic, man. I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed this. Yeah, I'm on the same same page as you, man. It's definitely a high dynamite once again. Um, this movie does, yeah, it's a movie that really stays with you. Like, you know, like yes. just it stays with you, not just from a shock factor, as we mentioned before, with the whole ending, yeah. like, well, I didn't expect that. But the questions it asks you at the end of sort of, you know, yeah. what you've just witnessed and how comfortable are you yes. in that, it's, yes. it's great like that. I think it's, um, that's what you want from a movie. You want to sort of walk 100%. away and go, wow, I watch something that's really enjoyable. Um, I agree with you. There was some pissing issues, but I think that all just led to the, you know, one, obviously the, the shock factor at the end, but yeah. the whole you know, the whole movie is a mystery, right? Until the end. So you're still yes. trying to figure out what's going on all the way to the end. And you hope there's going to be yes. a revelation. Um, and it's one that you did not see coming and you probably don't want. <laughs> you no, that's right. That's, a, that's the, the last, last option. You yeah. That's the last option that you want to see. Um, and that's what they do right there. And they deliver completely flawless performances. Of course, Mamuti. Um I don't know if this is like an easy role for him, for him at this point. Like, you know, the, the man can do, the man can do so much. So he's just he's just such a natural, just a natural <laughs> gift, really. Um, but yeah, I was really happy to see Aparna Kopana. She was fantastic. All the other cameos, sure. you know, always like to see um, Prithvi Raj in a small but impactful role. Um, yes, little. Uh, you know, now we're seeing sort of more faces. I think I mentioned to you just before the cop at the very start is my good friend from yes. Warshak. Um, <laughs> Old man. <laughs> yep, yep. So there's a few familiar faces, but yeah, this movie's a high dynamite. If you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend to watch this movie. Um, you know, if you are someone that's new to Malayalam cinema, like we sort of are, now we're sort of becoming more, you know, a bit more experienced with some of these older movies we're seeing. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead and check it out. Um, definitely recommend it. Um, but yeah, nice. so I think this was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. It was a good discussion. A lot of stuff to talk about. And yeah. I'll catch you on the so next much fun, probably. Man. Yeah, I'll catch you on the next probably high dynamite or dope Mangala movie. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to that great chat. <laughs> catch you, man. See you guys. <laughs> See you, dude. See ya.